Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to be taking a look at some of the features of PPP, namely the magic number and quality monitoring. So the more we learn about PPP and its features, you're going to see how rich of a protocol it is. And it, and it has some pretty cool functionalities, which I think all help explain why it's so popular in today's networks. We're going to start off by taking a look at loop detection and how PPP performs that. And that brings up the magic numbers concept. Okay, so we'll be taking a look at that in some detail. And then we'll briefly look at how PPP detects errors in frames. That portion's pretty straightforward, but it leads us into the concept of link quality monitoring. And this is a functionality of PPP where it keeps an eye on a circuit. And if the circuit doesn't per, uh, perform very well, it can be configured to take some actions. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, PPP loop detection. Here we have router A and B. They're connected via a serial connection and we're running PPP as the layer two data encapsulation method. So normally router B will transmit some data and it will also receive some data from router A. This is normal behavior obviously. But what happens when a loop comes up on a circuit? Well, it changes the communication between the two routers, or rather their ability to communicate. Let's say this is a loop on this particular circuit. And here's what happens. Router B will transmit a frame across the circuit. However, it never reaches router A. Rather, it's looped back towards router B. And that's how a loop gets its name because that's really what's happening. Router B sends its traffic out and it actually receives its own traffic. Okay, that's the nature of a loop. You might have heard of loops before if you've ever spoken to any of the telecom providers about say a T1 circuit or any serial link. They'll say, okay, there's a loop up on the circuit or I'm going to put a loop up on the circuit. Loops are actually a valuable uh, tool to testing a circuit. You can test to certain loops along the path in order to find where a potential error exists. So they're very helpful. However, when a loop comes up on a circuit and you don't want it there, that's when they're really bad. Because if this were a production circuit and for some reason the loop comes up, let's say a telco worker made a mistake and put a loop up on the wrong circuit they wanted to test, routers, router B's interface would still remain up because it's sending and it's receiving traffic. So it's tricked in a way to thinking that the circuit is okay when in reality it's not. So this is where PPP loop detection comes into play and the concept of the magic numbers. So quite uh, simply, when these two routers are communicating, they send back and forth uh, LCP messages, the link control protocol messages, along with all the data that they're sending each other. Inside the LCP message is something called the magic number. And each router has its own magic number on this particular serial link. So let's say router B uses the magic number of one, and router A uses the magic number of five. So all of router B's LCP messages are going to have a one in them and router A's will have a five in them. When router B receives an LCP message from router A, it sees the magic number and it's gonna compare it to its own. And as long as they're different, everything's okay. However, if a loop happens on the circuit, that's where the magic number is used to detect that loop. So you might have guessed now, router B sends out an LCP. It never makes it to router A. In fact, it's looped back towards itself. And so router B is going to receive its own LCP message with its own magic number in it. As soon as that happens, router B says, okay, there must be a loop on this circuit. That's a bad thing. I'm going to shut the interface down. Okay, so that's how magic numbers are used in order to detect the loop. If a router sees its own then it knows there's a problem. And not only that, the action it takes is to shut down that interface. So this is a very helpful thing because it's not always obvious to a network uh, administrator or a monitoring platform to detect a loop. Eventually they're found, but they can be really hard to detect sometimes. So this is a, an invaluable feature of PPP. Okay, PPP's ability to detect errors is pretty straightforward. If router B transmits a frame to router A, and here's the frame, in the end is the frame check sequence, 
and there's a value in there. Router A receives the frame. It's going to run a calculation on the entire frame. It comes up with a value. It compares it to what's stored in the frame check sequence that was created by router B. And if they don't match, it knows that some errors were introduced when that frame was transmitted across the circuit. When this happens, router A is just going to discard that frame. Now, link quality monitoring is related to error detection. And quite simply, LQM is used to monitor the link, and if it gets to a point where too many errors are occurring, the routers can be configured to take that circuit out of service. And so LQM works like this. Each router sends a report to the other one, and this is called a link quality report. And there are some statistics inside there, and one of those statistics are the number of errored frames that the router received. So router B can send over a LQR, and it's going to have some information in there uh, about the errored frames. Now, if the number of errored frames get to be too high, and you can configure a percentage, a threshold, that if that threshold is crossed, the routers can then go ahead and decide, okay, well, this circuit is now not performing well at all. It's past the threshold, meaning too many errors are occurring. We're going to go ahead and shut the circuit down. Now, this is a really useful feature as long as you have redundant circuits in your network. Because sometimes even a, a dirty connection, one that has a lot of errors on it, even that is better than no connection. So in our example here, this may be our only link between two portions of the network. And if it goes down because of link quality monitoring, we may be in worse shape than if we had it up, but we are just losing some packets due to errors. So using this feature, uh, you know, it's, it's appropriate in some situations, uh, usually when there are redundant or backup links available. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. Now, loops can happen on a circuit. Sometimes they're intentional and sometimes they're not. If you don't want a loop and one comes up, your service is going to be interrupted. Luckily, PPP can react to loops, and it does this by using the magic numbers. And quite simply, when a router sees its own magic number in the link control protocol messages, it knows a loop must exist, and it'll go ahead and turn down that interface. PPP uses the frame check sequence to detect errors in frames. And not only that, but it can monitor the quality of a serial connection. And if too many errors occur on that connection, PPP can be configured to take the link out of service. And again, this is useful when you have backup circuits available to you. Okay, so that's it. Those are the two features of loop detection using magic numbers and link quality monitoring. Thanks for watching.